right, so you guys saw in my last video that I uh, had a 15 meter snake XX. Well, I flew that for a little bit, but determined that it was uh, just a tad too small because in nil wind it was so difficult to launch. So this is a 16 meter Snake XX. And this is going to be kind of the start of my comparison between the Snake and the Hadron. Because when I was looking for my first advanced wing, I was uh, torn. Not sure which wing to get because Dudex says the Hadron XX is their most advanced wing. But the Snake XX is a competition level uh, swallow and brace wing, and the Hadron is just a cross country advanced reflex wing. So it's kind of confusing. Um, and, you know, the snake sizes are smaller for the same weight range. That's a good strong inflation. I got a lot of length. So I thought that the uh, snake would be easier to ground handle, like in strong winds and stuff, because it's a lower aspect ratio than the Hadron, and it's more like a classic profile, not as much reflex. But the uh, opposite seems to be true, and it may be because I have so much time ground handling a Hadron. But to me, the snake is harder to handle on the ground. And I find it harder to launch. Let's see if I can get some air. Alright, so. Uh, in my experience, ground handling and forward launches and no wind and stuff, the Hadron seems to be easier to launch because it always has the reflex, even at slow speeds. So the wing likes to shoot up overhead easier and uh, lock into position. Whereas in light winds with the snake, uh, trims in, it kind of has a tendency to hang back. Um, yeah, you'll also notice kiting this it is turbulent today, um, but the snake pitches more fore and aft. You kind of see that, and it requires more active piloting with uh, trims in, because it's more like a classic profile wing. All right, so now this is kiting with the trims all the way in. Um, the winds are lighter now, so you can kind of see the snake wants to hang back. I'm pulling the A's right now. Watch. See this? It stalled back down. So if you run slow in a nail wind launch, I'm pulling the A's just like it would be in a nail wind launch, and you get the wing only up part way, only up to here and let go, there's like a chance that it won't, uh, the wing's not going to come up all the way on its own. Whereas a Hadron, if you get it up to that 45 degree angle, uh, it's it's trimmed faster and wants to come overhead. Now you can negate that with the snake, just letting the trims out a little bit. But you can only do that if you're not using the power attack system, which I use. So I have to take off and land with the trims basically all the way in because I use power attack. What? Let's uh, rotate wings. I got a tangle here. Got to twist my risers. Okay. Is it 
18 meter hedge on X6, trims all the way in, flaps are up, not engaged. Cutting the same conditions, it's actually getting a little bit stronger. Hopefully this is just a cycle coming through. So the head-on is higher aspect ratio, which in some ways makes it harder to kite. Other ways it's easier because the reflex all the time. See right here is pretty stable. Flies similar to the snake. If you let the trims out on the snake to three, three or four, then it kites like the hadron with the reflex. And there's a big surge. So the hadron feels like it definitely has more lift. And I'll talk about this in the numbers later, but I'm lower in the weight range on this wing than I am on the snake. I'm a little bit heavier on the snake. Uh, I think Dudek makes the Hadron, they say it's more advanced than the snake because of the complicated risers. Although to me they're not that much more complicated, especially if you ignore the flaps, then they're less complicated. But I actually use the flaps. Basically, if you're using the flaps, don't use a speed bar or trimmers. Other than that, don't use the brakes if you're full trim and full bar. And uh, that's it. The snake rolls are don't use the speed bar if you're uh, not trimmed out to at least six. And don't pull brakes if you're full speed bar and full trim. You'll get a collapse. That's the rules. So you can see that Hadron is more pitch stable, but it takes more tip collapses. Um, probably just because it's higher aspect ratio. So, uh, and it's a bigger wing, so it has more inertia. It can't um, align with the wind and the yaw axis as fast as a snake with the higher aspect ratio, so the wind just pushes the tips in. Uh, let me show you how the Hadron XX handles with the flaps in. I got my C's and my D's, oh, my A's and C's. So this is the Hadron XX with the flaps in. You'll notice it likes to hang back further, similar to the snake, like that. It pitches forward when a when a gust of wind comes, you know, and puts more of my weight in the harness. But when the wind dies, it falls back. That's how the snake handles. So it's kind of like taking the reflex out of the hadron with the flats and making it like the snake. The benefit of the snake is you can use that all the time without having to pull any trims in. As a hadron, you have to stop, put your speed bar away, make sure your trims are in, and then you can make it like a classic paraglider. The snake, you can use more of the speed range at once, but you'll see with the numbers later that the speed range is higher on the hadron XX. You just can use more of the speed range with the snake XX at a time with the speed bar because of the power attack system. Trims in. Boom. Shoots overhead. Really fast. Same thing with the flaps in. Watch this. Comes up a little bit slower. Doesn't overshoot as much with the flaps in. It feels to me that the Hadron has about the same amount of reflex as a snake does with the snake's trims on a 
about four. Dudek, if you're watching, please uh, let us know the amount of reflex the hatch on has compared to the snake. Be greatly appreciated. That's why I feel like the hatch on's easier to launch. And it seems to roll less. To the sides. It wants it's easier to keep the hatch on overhead. Alright, so what I'm trying to demonstrate here is uh how quickly and easily the wings inflate at different trim positions. The first few here are the snake with the trims in, and you'll kind of notice how much it hangs back and uh comes up slow. Uh very similar to how the Hadron XX is when you have the flaps engaged. Here's the snake with the trim set to three, and uh, you'll see it comes up a little bit faster and a little higher overhead. And this is the snake with the trims on five, and uh, you'll notice it comes up a lot faster. All right, here's the Hadron. Um, even with the trims in, the flaps are not engaged. You'll see how quickly the Hadron um, inflates. Once you just get it off the ground a little bit, it shoots up overhead and kind of locks into position. So um, in my experience, just doing forward launches and no wind, the Hadron gets over your head faster, allows you to accelerate to flying speed faster so that your takeoff run is a shorter distance and you get in the air sooner. And you'll notice with the Hadron, uh, with the flaps engaged, it comes up a little bit slower. Um, that's why most people don't use them because the wing inflates slower when using the flaps for taking off. So hopefully you guys made it through the first boring half of my video. And this is the second half talking about all the detailed boring uh, specs and numbers. The Snake XX versus the Hadron XX. Uh, my all up weight flying both wings is 104 kilograms. And uh, these are the weight ranges of each wing. So the Hadron XX 18 meter weight range is very close to the 16 meter snake. Um, and actually the snake is rated up to 145 and the Hadron is only rated to 135 kilograms. Um, I don't recommend flying them at those weight ranges because good luck getting off the ground if you're foot launching. Um, I'm at 104 which puts me at 45% of the weight range on the snake and 31% of the weight range of the Hadron. Uh, these are GPS speeds. I had quite a bit of wind the other day, but I did the upwind speed and downwind speed, and it averaged out on the 60 meter snake, um, 40 miles an hour, and that's with using power attack uh, with the trim set to nine and full bar. The Hadron XX, uh, I set the trims to three and full bar and gave me 37.5. Um, the reason I do that is because that's how I normally fly the Hadron XX. I set the trims to three um, and use the bar. That way when I come off the bar, I can still use plenty of brakes without um, uh, fear of taking a collapse from pulling brakes with trims released. Um, if I did release the trims on the Hadron to nine so that it would be the same as the Snake, then the average speed was about the same for trims at nine, full bar for both wings. Very, very close in their speed range. Um, these are the sink rates, not too important. Not too many people care about this in the paramotor world um, because we're not free flying, we have motors, so who cares what your sink rate is, right? But it just kind of gives you an idea of the efficiency of the wing. If you take your wing out and uh, with a Vario and idle your motor, uh, you can measure your sink rate and compare it to these wings. So sink rate, uh, with the trims in for the snake was 500 feet per minute on the hadron it was 400 feet per minute but plus or minus 100 it's really hard to get that accurate unless the air is dead calm and it was not uh, that day climb rate was about the same for both wings 600 feet per minute and then the sink rate on bar surprisingly was higher on the hadron at 900 feet per minute and the snake was 800 feet per minute all right so this this is kind of my list that I came up here, uh, I came up with 
comparing different um, attributes uh, of the wing. So roll rate, that's talking about how fast the wing rolls, doing barrel rolls, wing overs. If you jab a whole bunch of brake, how quickly does that wing roll over? And both these wings are so fast. The roll rate is so fast on both of them that I don't even know how you would measure that. Let's just say they're both plenty fast enough, faster than you would probably ever need um, in a wing. Pitch and speed control, that's um, how much control you have over your pitch. Uh, I gave that mark to the snake because of the power attack system. The Hadron, you cannot get the, that wing with the power attack system anymore. However, the risers do have the attachment points to hook up a power attack system, the uh, speed bar line and the pulleys. So uh, later on, I plan on getting uh, some pulleys and speed bar line and trying uh, to hook power attack up on my Hadron XX. But for now, I gave that to the snake because the power attack system allows you to have greater control over the pitch of the wing. Recovery arc, I gave to the snake XX. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more down here when we get to this chart. But basically, when you do a wing over uh, with the snake, the recovery arc is um, faster, more shallow compared to the Hadron XX. The Hadron XX loses more altitude with each wing over compared to the snake. Stability, I give that mark to the Hadron. Um, basically because even with trims in, you have the reflex in the Hadron's profile. So I have a lot more confidence with the Hadron when the trims are in, just taking my hands off the controls and relaxing even in turbulence. But the snake um, is a little bit less stable. So I gave that mark to the Hadron. Ease of launch, I also gave to the Hadron for similar reasons. It's just a little bit more stable even when the trims are in. So uh, I find that the wing comes up faster. I have a shorter takeoff run with the Hadron and uh, the wing just behaves a little bit better. Foot drag, gave it to the Hadron. Um, same reason, stability in the wing, even when trims are in, um, it just climbs and descends less. It, it's more slices through turbulence than it does uh, climb if you get a gust of wind. Slalom, obviously to the snake, that's what it's designed for. You get a greater pitch control with the speed bar, so obviously the snake's gonna be better for slalom. Also, I think the snake is better for acro um, because as we mentioned earlier, the recovery arc is shorter with the snake. Collapse recovery, uh, you can find videos of Snake XX uh, wings doing SIV clinics, but I haven't found a single video of anyone intentionally pulling collapses with a Hadron XX. Um, and from what I hear, the Hadron does not uh, stall very well. So collapse recovery I gave to the snake. Collapse resistance, however, I gave to the Hadron. Uh, reason being, you have the reflex all the time, even when the trims are in. Um, and I've flown in some really rough stuff with the Hadron, and uh, it doesn't collapse, trust me. Cross country, gave to the Hadron. Um, kind of the same reason, you know, it's just a little bit more stable. Um, it's got a good uh, trim range on it, it's plenty fast. Um, and I would feel safer going cross country with the Hadron than I would a snake. Free flying, I marked both of them. Um, mostly because I have done quite a bit of free flying with the Hadron, but not so much with the snake. I plan on doing that, I just haven't had it long enough. Uh, I did take it up in thermal, the 15 meter snake a little bit, and uh, didn't have any problems with it. It seemed to handle fine, um, so we'll see. But the Hadron free flying with the flaps in is close to a classic paraglider, and uh, I enjoy that. Uh, so that's seven points for the snake and seven points for the Hadron. It's just where you choose uh, to put those points, you know, what type of pilot are you, uh, would determine which wing uh, you might like better. All right, so down to this little um, chart or graph that I've drawn down here. This is basically the speed range of both wings, with this being the slowest speed and this being the, the fastest max speed you can fly. So the blue stands for the Hadron, and the green is the snake. The snake with the trims in, trim speed is slower than the trim speed with the Hadron. Um, 
unless you engage the flaps. If you engage the flaps on the Hadron, then the trim speed is about the same as the Snake with the trims in. But most people don't use the flaps, so your Hadron trim speed is going to be a little bit faster than the Snake trim speed. This uh, marker here is um, with the trims out or full speed bar on the Hadron, but only one, not both. If you um, go full trims out and full bar, then that gives you max speed on the Hadron in the blue here. The Snake, if you were uh, um, not using the power attack system and you were just to go full trims out, then it would be about the same as the Hadron as far as uh, your speed. <clears throat> then if you were to add speed bar and full trims with the Snake, you would get um, full speed very, very close to the Hadron. They're very close in speed. Um, whether or not you have a full tank of gas, um, you know, it's going to change the speed difference between the two wings more so than the actual wings themselves. They're both about the same speed. These lines that I've drawn here, though, um, represent um, the speed range you can use with uh, trims or with speed bar. So with the Hadron, you don't have power attack. So you can use the speed bar on the Hadron while the trims are in. So that would be like the first half of this range. If you push a speed bar on the Hadron, you get about half the speed range. Or if you release the trims, you get about half the speed range. And then the bar gives you the rest of the speed range. But for slalom style, um, you can only use with the bar, you know, half of the speed range at a time. With the snake and the power attack system hooked up, you get this larger area of speed range that you can use with the bar. So the manual says. So the manual says on the snake to use the power attack system with the trims um, set at least to six, but no more than nine. And the reason being is you will need at least. You at least need to release the trims to six um, to get enough reflex to use a speed bar, but no more than nine so that if you accidentally pull brake um, while, while you're on full bar, you don't take a collapse. So I set my trims to nine, and uh, using the power attack, your snake trim speed is here. If you go full bar with the power attack, you get to use 75% of the speed range versus the Hadron using the bar you only get about 50 percent of the speed range so with the snake you get a little bit um, more control of the speed range here for you to use the last little bit here of the speed range you have to disconnect the power attack system and then go full trims out and full bar which you can't disconnect the power attack system in flight whereas the hadron you can pull your trims in, pull the bar in, and engage the flaps in flight, and you get this extra little bit of speed range. So in theory, you can use, you have a greater speed range in one flight on the Hadron than the Snake does. All right, so to kind of wrap it all up in conclusion, um, both of the wings are close. Both are great wings. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other, um, it just depends on what kind of a pilot you are. So if you um, like to do acro and you want a really fast uh, climb rate and uh, a faster recovery arc so you can do more maneuvers on your way down, if you just like to climb up, use your motor, and then work on acro skills on the way down, I'd recommend the Snake. If you um, use Speed Bar a lot, and you like to use a speed bar for pitch control, meaning you know, you're know you flying really fast full bar, you bank a really hard um, turn, and then pull the bar in to get that really fast swing around and then go full bar again and zoom off. If you're that kind of pilot, I'd also recommend the Snake. You have greater control with the power attack system. If you don't fit into either one of those two categories, then I recommend the Hadron uh, XX. It's just uh, generally, um, I think, a little bit easier um, to live with and to fly with um, compared to the Snake. But that being said, the Hadron XX don't think that it can't do acro because it can. There's lots of people out there doing acro on the Hadron, um, and it also does slalom well. And you can use the speed bar with the trims in, uh, which is a benefit of this wing. But one last thing I want to say about um, these wings 
is uh, if you're not flying these wings that are the right size for your all-up weight, then your experience with these wings will vary greatly. I have flown uh, a 20 meter Hadron XX and an 18 meter Hadron XX and flying the 20 meter felt like a beginner wing with how sluggish and slow it handled. So if you get the wrong size wing for your weight, you're not going to have that fast roll rate and uh, dynamic handling. Uh, you won't have the same experience um, as someone who is flying the same wing in the correct weight range. Um, same goes for being too small. You know, I first got the Snake XX 15 meter, and it was just so fast. It flew great in the air if you can get off the ground. And the first couple times I flew it, I had plenty of wind. Um, but trying to launch that wing in nil wind <coughs> is very tough. So um, if you can, demo wings before you get them. Or to talk to someone who owns them or has flown multiple. And uh, get their opinion on what size wing you should fly for your all-up weight. Or another way you can do it is... Uh, come up with a percentage range. So look at the recommended weight range and try to fall. Uh, I like to be right in like the 50% uh, area, really no more than 50% of the weight range um, because I think it's really hard for takeoff and landings, but no less than, let's say, um, you know, 40% I think would be ideal. 40 to 50% um, in the weight range for your all up recommended weight. Uh, I hope this helped someone out. I hope you uh, got some information from it. Um, don't be afraid to uh, send me a message and uh, ask me questions about which wing you think would be better. I've also flown a Ozone Freeride, uh, which is in the similar class category as, this, as these wings, but I flew the 19 meter, uh, and really I need to be on a 16 or 17 meter. Probably a 17 meter would be a little bit better, more enjoyable. Um, so I can kind of give my opinion on that. And uh, I have a review on that wing uh, in one of my other videos on my channel. So check that out if you're interested. And thanks for watching.